Good morning, folks. Today we've got a touch of space weather while having a simultaneously silent star. We'll look ahead a bit in terms of what the sun's going to offer us, run down some more amazing news articles, and take a look at the new imminent lithospheric risk on Earth, a volcano in Iceland. But first, let's come to spaceweathernews.com and find only the departure of the final piece of the dark coronal holes. No flashes, pops, surges, or releases with which to be concerned. The solar flaring itself is almost as low as it can be. We're watching the march towards solar minimum as a blank star once again is presented in the Earth-facing longitudes. Let's peek in on when that will change. Zero is center disk, and as we turn, you see bright spots just behind the limb coming into view with some more of those sunspots and a coronal hole from the north sitting on the far side of the sun right now. The real space weather story at Earth is the solar wind. After the sector boundary the day before, we saw a coronal hole stream impact without any signature of any of the smaller CMEs, and the magnetic storm hit level 1 and then died. If the solar wind calms, this is all we'll get from it, but of course any storm is good for a bit of tropical intensification. Don't expect this to develop anymore, but the timing of the alert is what we note. And speaking of alerts, residents and tourists are now advised to stay well away from Hecla where they say pressure is rapidly building and a major explosive eruption is imminent, could happen any time. Eyes open Iceland and in the downwind areas of Europe that'll be affected. First article today was a struggle even for me to fully understand, but the magnetic helicity of the entire corona is a big deal and it is examined here with some cool looks at the field structure. The more interesting article comes out of the ESA. Now these neutral hydrogen loops are not anything new, but the puzzle certainly is. It's not a loop or a ring, but a column, and instead of the expected spherical expansion of the gas, it expands in that column right in line with Earth's North Pole, which is why it looks like a ring. Directly in line, 325 light years away. Hmm. Top weather includes a treacherous lightning outbreak in India that killed nearly 100 people in two days. One will note, though, that farmers there can't really afford to get out of the fields, kind of just have to sit in harm's way. We also have the first definitive billion dollar disaster of the year. These floods in China have displaced a quarter million people and destroyed nearly 400,000 hectares of crops. It isn't as though the U.S. had an easy night last night either. Storms ripped down with wind and even a few tornadoes. Eyes open for more coming tonight. Folks, the schedule for Observing the Frontier 2017 has been released. It is tentative and very general. 13 presentations, 2 breakfast, 8 hangouts, including the social night on Saturday. We're hoping to nail down all the speakers within just a couple of weeks here. And by the way, Michael Claridge said he can give 2 talks at the conference, so that is awesome. And yesterday I invited Judith Curry to come talk about the climate. I have 11 fingers crossed on that one. She's a gem. Suspiciousobservers.org slash OTF2017 is the conference page. That tall oblong O in Observers is a zero, by the way. Registration is open, and by the end of the weekend, it looks like we'll have no more VIP seats left. We've got pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. Update coming soon on your top questions regarding the challenge. Space weather news versus the USGS. It's 3.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Oh, <laughs>